1988, the Olympic trials for the United States were held in Indianapolis, Indiana. And on July 16th, Florence Griffith Joyner lined up for the 100 meters, attempting to qualify for her second Olympics, which would be held in Seoul, South Korea later on that year. In the heat, she dominated the race, finishing way ahead of the rest of the field, stopping the clock at 10.60 seconds, which was way lower than the standing world record. But the wind came up as plus 3.2 meters per second, way over the allowable limit. But it showed just what Florence Griffith Joyner was capable of doing. Flojo would eventually come back just shortly later that same day for the quarterfinal rounds. And just like the heat, she dominated the field, crossing the line way ahead of the rest of the ladies. But this time the clock stopped at 10.49 seconds. The announcers kept the same tone, didn't get too excited as they assumed it was wind aided just like the heat. Florence Griffith Joyner blowing away the field. But moments later, it came up that the wind was under the allowable limit. Not only that, but it was 0.0, .0 meters per second. But even the announcer couldn't believe it to be true. Wait a minute. The anemometer says the wind was within the legal limits. Ah, it cannot be. No one can run that fast. Now there's tons of evidence indicating that the race was in fact wind aided from flags and bibs blowing in the background before the race, the wind from the triple jump that was going on at the same time, the wind from the other 100 meter races on that same day as well. There has been tons of research done over the years on that one specific race. Despite it technically standing as the official world record, most in the sport are aware that it is a truly wind aided race. Despite that, Flojo would come back the following day for the 100 meter finals and she she would go on to run 10.61 seconds to win that 100 meter finals and the wind came up as plus 1.2 meters per second setting what many consider to be the real women's 100 meter world record now many can debate about the races many even debate about the performance enhancement but that's not my concern we're not going to discuss that in my opinion flojo's 10.61 seconds and that olympic trials final in 1988 is the official accurate women's 100 meter dash world record now it has been almost 32 years since that record was set, one of the oldest records on the books in the entire sport. So it brings up the question if this world record can ever actually be broken. Let's take a quick look back at some of the fastest women of all time. And including Flojo, only two other women in history have ever run sub 10.70 seconds in the women's 100 meter dash. First, of course, we have Flojo with that 10.61 second race with a plus 1.2 meter per second win behind her. She also ran 10.62 seconds with a plus 1.0 meter per second wind. Then we have Carmelita Jeter also from the United States. In 2009, she ran 10.64 seconds with a plus 1.2 meter per second wind behind her. Then we have Marion Jones. Back in the 90s, she ran 10.65 seconds and Johannesburg, South Africa, which was also at altitude. And she, in addition, had a plus 1.1 meter per second wind behind her. Finally, we have Carmelita Jeter again, who ran 10.67 seconds, but this time had a negative 0.1 meter per second headwind in that race. Now, what makes all these races very interesting, and the reason I noted all the wind for them, is that if you organize them and correct them for the wind in altitude, you'll actually see that Carmelita Jeter's 10.67 second run, which had that negative 0.1 meter per second headwind, converts to 10.66 seconds, faster than all the other races once we convert them for the wind and for the altitude. So what does this all mean? No, I don't think Carmelita Jeter is the official world record record holder in the women's 100 meter dash, but it does put into context that this world record is not completely impossible. It's actually somewhat attainable and can be looked at as somewhat in reach. If Carmelita Jeter, who is competing both winning and losing with some current ladies in this past decade, can actually get close to that world record, we might be able to see some of the current ladies or next generation of ladies get closer to that world record much sooner than we think. Now let's take a look at some of the 100 meter ladies who are in contention to not necessarily break that world record but get into that 10-6 range and push closer and closer towards that world record. So first off Shakari Richardson from the United States she had that amazing 100 meter run at the NCAA championships of 10.75 seconds just last year in 2019. She is very young she was just a freshman at LSU so she definitely has the potential to push lower into that 10-7 low range and potentially in the future into that 10-6 range. There's also Shelly Ann Fraser Price 
Now, she is one of the greatest sprinters in the history of track and field. She has a personal best of 10.70 seconds set all the way back in 2012. But just last year at the Doha World Championships, she ran 10.71 seconds and she's still been running very, very fast. 2019 was one of the best years of her career. So she definitely has the potential to improve her personal best and get into that sub 10.7 range. Her fellow countrywoman from Jamaica, Elaine Thompson, also has the same personal best of 10.70 seconds. This time it was set back in 2016, the same year that she went on to win the 100 and 200 meter gold medals at the Rio Olympic Games. She has been struggling with some injuries on and off the past couple years, but once she addresses her injuries and gets back to her full healthy form, she is definitely going to be a contention to improve her personal best and get lower into that 10 600 meter dash time. Now a couple other younger ladies who might be in contention, Dina Asher Smith from Great Britain, she only has a personal best of 10.83 seconds, so a little bit slower than some of the other ladies, but she just set that personal best last year at the World Championship Finals, and she's been improving every single year. She definitely has a lot of room to improve, she has a lot of potential, and she's likely going to get to that 10.7 range. We might see her push into the 10.6s in the following years to come. Finally, from the United States, we have Aaliyah Hobbs. So her personal best is 10.85 seconds, so the slowest out of all the ladies that I noted, but she is also very, very young, just like Dina Asher Smith. She has extreme consistency within the 10-9 range. She's been dealing with a few injuries the past couple seasons, but once she gets over those injury woes, just like Elaine Thompson, I think she's going to be in that 10-7 range, and very likely in the future, she could push into that 10-6 range, so keep a lookout for her as well. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. There's tons of other ladies who are definitely in contention to get into that 10-6 range, such as Brianna Williams from Jamaica, Kayla White from the United States, Natalia White from Jamaica, even Gina Bass from the Gambia. And again, all these ladies, I'm not saying that they're going to break the world record or that world record by Florence Griffith Joyner is definitely going to go down. But these are some ladies who have the potential to push into that 10-6 range and push closer and closer to that world record. Of course, we know world records are meant to be broken. They won't last forever. But I think this is one that might have some potential and is not necessarily a completely impossible world record. So go in the comments below. Let me know if you think this world record of 10.61 seconds set by Flojo is an attainable world record and can be broken in the next couple years. And let me know some of the ladies who either are very young or are still running right now who might be in contention to get into that 10.6 range in the women's 100 meter dash. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and be back again for the next video. Thanks.